It seems like that U.S. stock market isn't that hot for anymore. So where are we heading? Investors are getting restless, and just when you thought things were quietly down, will crafted economic phase is quietly unfolding. In just a few days, the Chinese issue skyrocketed from 2,700 points to a staggering 3,300 points. It was so wild that the Shanghai Stock Exchange trading system almost couldn't handle it. Even big names in investing are taking notice. More. Just Alibaba? Are you talking everything. JD, Baidu, Ev PDB, everything. two Chinese Things. ETFs? Everything. everything. China. While the Chinese stock market is on fire, Warren Buffett made it crystal clear that he won't be buying in shares, not even a dime. So what's with this polarizing perspective on the issue? Today, I'm here to peel back the layers and review the truth behind this economic phase and the stories that come with it. Stick around, my friend. You won't want to miss this. I'm Sheila Wang. I'm here to update it on the most cutting edge and fresh business and investment information for you. So don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe my channel. I also welcome you to join the discussion in the comment section below. Now, let's be diving into today's topic together. Firstly, here's the truth we have to know. U.S. rate cards a global capital migration. My friend, just picture this. The U.S. has been like a treasure chest, attracting global funds over the past two years, all eager to cash in on those enticing high interest rates. But then, on September 80th, the door of this treasure chest swung wide open. The Federal Reserve announced a rate card, hating global investors. At this very moment, the Chinese Asian market opened its arms, particularly shouting just like, come on, we've got endless opportunities here. Just six days after the US rate card, the People's Bank of China rode a wave of monetary policies like rain after long drought. And the Central Political Bureau meeting it was like a reassuring pat on the back for the market. Boost the stock market, stabilizing the real estate market, and invigorate the economy. This isn't just talk, my friend, it's action you can see. The central bank governor's promise were clear. We are kicking things off with 500 billion yuan. And if that goes well, we could do another 500 billion, maybe even a third. This isn't just a stock market party, it's a nuclear level strategy to stimulate the economy. Over the past two years, we've seen that China's asset market was faced a brutal winter, with real estate, stocks, and even the industrial sector in deep trouble, right? Consumption has downgraded, deflationary pressures weigh heavy, and society is feeling unprecedented stress. In the midst of this crisis, the government has been on the hunt for solutions. But hold on, this game goes deeper. The second layer is about attracting foreign capital back into the country. With a fast rate card, a flood of US dollars is about to flow out. China needs that capital to drive its economic growth. So, what's the plan? Pump up the stock market to show foreign investors the promising and safe prospects of investing in China. And here's the third layer, my friend, lurking beneath the surface. It's all about hedging against the pressure of a rising yuan. The yuan hitting 7 to the dollar is a strong indicator that foreign investors are confident in the Chinese economy. However, if the yuan appreciates too much, it could hinder China's industry upgrades and exports. Thus, the government needs to manage the currency's fluctuations to keep control. So, to wrap it up, this white ride in the Asia isn't just a random spike. It's a meticulous crafted economic drama. Well, having seen the underlying logic of the play, our concern below is probably how our investor can participate in this show. As a domestic investor, I have to say, Asia stock is total a bad boy, objectively. The Asia market is a double-edged sword. We all know that the stock market and the economy go hand in hand, right? Some folks are worried that what we're saying is just a man-made water buffalo. Not exactly healthy. But don't forget, 
the stock market can actually give the economy a boost, creating a positive feedback loop. When stock prices rise, companies feel more confident to grow. When investors make money, their desire to spend skyrockets, right? And with global hot money flowing in, China's economy gains even more vitality. This is the magic of turning the fig into the real. From this point of view, this is very positive monetary strategy. Of course, there's no denying that there's also some more pessimistic or you might say more rational investors view a share market like this. I understand that Chinese equities are cheap from a multiple perspective, but sometimes stuff is cheap for a reason. Oh my friend, do you remember at the beginning when we talked about Warren Buffett not buying a single A share? I think Buffett's perspective is quite different from theirs. He prefers businesses that he can really understand. To him, many companies in the Asian market might just look like a big foggy mess. Uh, some language barriers, cultural differences, and varying accounting standards can make it tough for him to see the true nature of the Asian companies. Well, biggest mistake they make is listening to a lot of other people and 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 and. Uh, and buying something because they think it's going to go up next week or next month and for whatever reason people give you you should understand what you buy now if you buy he seeks a stable investment environment but asian market is notoriously volatile with the limit ups and limit downs happening all the time buffy's investment philosophy is all about long-term game but in the asian stock market we have to admit that some people are chasing the short-term quick profits, right? This kind of investment vibe just doesn't match Buffett's style. So when people are hearing that Buffett isn't investing in a shares, what can we invest in? But hold up, my friend. Just because Buffett isn't in the a share game doesn't mean that this market has lost its spark. As investors, we need to think independently and not just to follow the crowd. The Asian market has this unique charm and advantages. Well, the falling part of all those people who think about is it too late to jump on the Chinese stock market train. Over the past couple of weeks, we witnessed a wild surge in the Chinese stock market. The FTSE China index has bounced back a whopping 28%. Amazing, right? Looking at the historical data, thanks to 2005, the FTSE China index has experienced a 30 rebounds of over 10%. On average, this rebound lasted about 76 trading days with an average gain of 38%. In fact, at least 25% of these rebounds saw gains close to 60%. So yeah, the valuation in the Chinese stock market are still looking pretty attractive. But just how much room is there for the future growth? From a rational standpoint, the market does indeed have room to rise. Current valuations are still below the median level. If we see some unexpected fiscal policies rolling out, those valuations could expand even more. So here, historically speaking, for the stock market to sustain a long-term bull run, it needs solid fundamental support. While there might be short-term divergences between the stock market and the real economy over the long haul, they are definitely correlated. Getting back to the fundamentals, a series of policies should lead to some marginal improvements. With many systematic and structural factors remaining unchanged, it doesn't seem enough to kick off a massive boom market. Compared to the real estate sector, the stock market simply doesn't have the have to act as a growth engine or the cycle's backbone. So when it comes to understanding the underlying logic policy shifts, it's crucial to have a clear perspective. And don't forget to consider the limitation of these policies. And uh, about my advice, Get involved moderately. Don't miss out this little wave of gains, but don't go overboard. After all, the blood, sweat, and tears of countless retail investors can be summed up with Graham's classic saying, all boom market is the primary reason ordinary investors lose money. Lastly, good luck, my friend.